Hey guys, we're seeing another earthquake swarm on the Reykjanes Peninsula in a different location um, that we haven't talked about yet in the last few months, and that is the area of Klaifa Vatten. Um, so an earthquake did occur almost five kilometers northeast of Krizovik. We know the Krizovik volcanic system. We've talked about this. This is one of the systems that could send a lava flow to the capital area of Reykjavik. So just after 10 o'clock yesterday, there was an earthquake and it was 3.3 in magnitude and uh, the Icelandic Meteorological Office says there are no signs as of right now that it is co um, connected to the ongoing eruption that we're seeing in the Sudnuka crater series um, in the area around Grindavik, Blue Lagoon, Swartzengi power plant. That eruption has been going on since March 16th and it's still going. There's one large crater that still keeps going Going and shows no signs of stopping as of now. So Klaifa Vatten, what is this? That's quite an interesting area, guys. And that lake is very, very interesting. And there's some stories around that lake, what happened there. So let's have a little bit of a closer look at this. So Klaifa Vatten is a lake and it's one of the largest lakes on the Reykjanes Peninsula. It's located in the southwest of Iceland as a whole and it covers an area of 9.1 square kilometers. That's roughly 3.5 square miles and it's one of Iceland's deepest lakes. So it has a depth of roughly 97 meters. That is 318 feet. So Klaifa Vatten is located basically in the center of the Reykjanes Peninsula and it's near the Krizovik and the Gunhover geothermal area. So a very active area there and this region is very well known for its geothermal and geological activity and that's why that landscape that you see around there as you see around the Blue Lagoon and Grindavik is covered in a thick layer of lava which itself is topped then by by this moss that grows on these lava rocks and there is a lot of hot springs and steam in many areas because a row of active volcanoes runs along its length. So interesting, it's active, right? So why is there an earthquake? And it's not only one earthquake, that earthquake was accompanied by a larger earthquake swarm. We talk about that in a minute. So um, yes, we know that the Reykjanes Peninsula itself and of course, Klaifa Vatten lies on the fissure zone of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So that's basically where the North American tectonic plate and the Eurasian tectonic plates are moving away from each other. So these movements where the tectonic plates are pulling apart is what causes this region to have so many eruptions and earthquakes because it's tearing basically the area apart. And um, and here comes an interesting story. In the year 2000, there was an earthquake right beneath that lake, Klaifa Vatten. And then it's stunning what happened then. It has drained the lake of over 20% of its surface area. And it has recovered since then, but it's never became the same. So. Also, this seismic event has created hot springs in one corner of the lake. So in the lake, there is a hot spring now. And we know in Iceland, these hot springs, they have volcanic origin. That's why it's getting so warm. And, uh, you know, interesting lake and it's rumbling there. We know what happens if magma mixes with water. That's very explosive. That's not a risk at the moment, I'm just saying this. So um, that draining of this lake, Klaifa Vatten, was quite, I wouldn't say world famous, but you know, there one Icelandic author has even um, written a book titled um, the, the Draining Lake about this. Um, this lake is not fed by any rivers or anything. All the water that is coming in and out of it, it's coming from the poorest lava rock around it. So it's 
it's just water coming through these rocks going into that lake and the interesting thing is that this lake still has a high fish population and it's very popular for people to go fishing there um and also there's a story that's just folklore that it's something similar to loch ness um is living in that lake like a whale like monster um, so yeah, that's that's the story of this lake. And of course, um, this lake is visited on a regular basis by sightseeing tours of people that visit the Reykjanes Peninsula. And one thing that started recently where I think that's scary is like scuba diving tours. And on these tours, the divers go down to the hot springs. So imagine you're in that deep lake and you see the hot springs where you know that has a volcanic origin and you see the water bubbling. Um, they can feel it, right? Um, and, and this is basically what they're doing there. They're exploring the world between two tectonic plates that are moving away from each other and you're down there. Um, I wouldn't do it. It's way too scary for me. No, thank you. But I'm sure for many scuba divers um, who are thrill seeking, this is probably a cool spot. Maybe I wouldn't go right now while there's earthquakes, but you know, people, they just... Some people just don't care, they like the thrill. So that earthquake 3.3 in magnitude was felt even downtown Reykjavik. And then there was many earthquakes aftershock since then. So about 50 to 70 earthquakes have been recorded since then. Most of these aftershocks though were under magnitude one in size. So not really very big. The source of the 3.3 magnitude earthquakes was measured in Kleifavatn at a depth of six kilometers. So the question is, we've had other earthquakes the last few months in other areas and uh, some of the scientists or many scientists said that it's related to the two tectonic plates moving away from each other. And if you're in Iceland, you can even see the rift of these tectonic plates moving away from each other. You can really see this deep graben where some people you can, in some areas you can swim in it and in some areas you can walk through it. So it's quite amazing. You can see that these two tectonic plates are dividing basically the area going right through Iceland. And that's what's causing magma to be able to come up to the surface. And uh, the question is, Will this have an effect on what's going on right now near Grindavik with this eruption? As of now, like I said, they don't think so, but you can't rule it out. So definitely they have to monitor it. The eruption in the Sudnuka crater series that started on March 16th doesn't seem to stop as of now. There is still a continuous lava flow from a deeper magma reservoir that flows through the magma chamber and it flows right out into the eruption. But one thing has changed recently since April 4th sort of thing. Um, the magma chamber that is underneath Schwarzengi and the Blue Lagoon is filling up again. It's building up pressure again, despite the fact that magma is still flowing out at the eruption site. So that's going to be interesting because whenever this magma chamber reaches the point of maximum elasticity, basically when it's full, it can't stretch any further, it has triggered the next event in the past. We have learned this since November 10th when the first event was triggered. A huge magma flow was building a, an, an underground magma tunnel of a length of 15 kilometers that goes underneath Grindavik and into the sea. It was a lot of magma that was sent out there, but it didn't erupt to the surface. And then since then, we have seen eruptions in December and January and February in March. So definitely it's going to be interesting. Should this eruption still be ongoing when the magma chamber is full again, will it then boost the current eruption? Will the that one crater will another fissure erupt again? Will this be more massive? So usually we ha did see since November events every three to four weeks. I mean, that is, this event now is changing. As I said, it started March 16th. So we're almost a month, um, but you know, they will do more satellite images and GPS data so that they know how much 
magma is in that magma chamber because we know if there is roughly about age between age to 13 million cubic meters it sends the magma on its way to trigger an event either an underground intrusion or an eruption so that's going to be interesting and you know it's rumbling they're saying this peninsula has woken up from an 800 year sleep sort of thing so everything is is new and interesting there it's not super concerning because these earthquakes from the moving tectonic plates happen quite often there um but you know since there's other activities going on underground right now um, what influence will this have? We have to wait and see, and that's basically what the experts at the Icelandic Metrological Office are saying as well. It doesn't look like it's connected, but more data has to come in so that they could further investigate this thing. So I just thought I wanted to let you know. And guys, check out my other videos. There's lots of stuff. Italy is rumbling. California might be rumbling. There's one scientist that said we could see the big one or we could see an earthquake at the San Andreas Fault this year. So that is scary, I think. And uh, check out that video. There is a, a little settlement of park um, field that's basically the earthquake capital of the world. So I'm talking about that in this video. Check it out. And a big shout out to uh, um, another channel, Dutch Sinze. Um, thank you so much for um, yeah sending your viewers to my channel. I really, really appreciate this. And it's very interesting, guys. Check out his channel. Um, he he has a, a different approach that goes away from the normal average science. And you know, the science regarding earthquakes and volcanoes is not very advanced. So making um, really informed predictions or precise predictions um, in the long run, it's not really possible yet. And that's why the scientists in Iceland are scratching their heads about what's going on underneath the Reykjanes Peninsula. And uh, someone predicts this, this, this. So Dutch Sinza has a different approach and it's interesting to, to watch his predictions. So yeah, check it out, guys. Um, I think it's always interesting to, to go away from the mainstream and, and look at different theories because he's been right in the past, right? And uh, yeah, guys, what else can I say? I hope to see you very, very soon. If you're new here, please subscribe. I would love that. And leave this video a like. I would love that too. And uh, yeah, weather is super nice here right now. It's about 19 degrees Celsius. So I, I have some gardening to do. I, I need to get more veggies started. I'm so behind with this. So I, I need to do this. My veggie garden right now looks basically like an overgrown something. And one of my old horses recently just tore down the fence and ate everything that I had left in there. So I have to start from scratch. This is what happens if you have a lot of animals. And uh, of course, since the horse broke in, he left the gate open and now all the bunnies are in there eating the rest. So I got to take care of this. I'm out of here, guys. I see you today with another update. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe. Bye-bye.